Dear reader, I'm Tony, and this is Book Text. Today I have a catch up on how I've been doing so far with Cloak and Dagger Christmas. But first, our word of the day is the word ambilogy. This is a noun, and it's actually a more archaic form of ambiguity. So it refers to uh, when you have doubtful or uncertain meaning. So ambilogy was the predecessor to ambiguity. So I have been working on uh, Cloak and Dagger Christmas all month, and I thought I would kind of talk about what I've read so far, what I'm reading right now, and what I'm going to read next to meet all of the prompts. So for the prompt of study, book about your profession, I read uh, Death in a Tenured Position by Amanda Cross. This is the story of a female professor. She's the only female professor in her department at Harvard, and she is murdered. Um, and another professor has to solve the crime. This book was, it had a, an interesting um, cast of characters, some minor characters that I thought were really fun. It's part of a series and I kind of just jumped into the middle, but it could be read as a standalone. I thought it was fine that way. Uh, but this book did have um, a, an agenda about um, kind of supporting female, a, a female academics. And as a female academic, I appreciated that, but I don't know if the mystery was the best setting for it. I thought sometimes that the push for support actually overwhelmed the story and got in the way of good storytelling. So it wasn't a light read in that way because it was, you know, trying to accomplish something, which is fine, but it, uh, it, you just have to know that going into it, that it's not just a mystery, it's a mystery with a purpose. Um, so I, I ended up giving this one three stars. It was, it was fine. I don't know that I'll read it again. Then I read for the prompt of Billiard Room, which is the next numbered book in a series. I read Bury Your Dead by Louise Penny. This is uh, in the Armand Gamache series. This book made me cry. It made me laugh. It made me feel warm and then also freezing cold because it takes place in the winter in Quebec. And I, for the first time in a long time, this book actually made me forget that there was a pandemic going on. I was just so in, into the story, you know, it's so engaging, the world is so real that I forgot about the pandemic. And so I loved this book for that very reason, I gave it five stars, would read again, would read anything in this series again, uh, but I want to move forward and read the whole series eventually. So. Loved this one. Then on a whim, I kind of picked up uh, a book that is both Christmassy and a mystery, um, and that was The Mistletoe Murders, Murder, and Other Stories uh, by P.D. James. This was my first foray into P.D. James's writing, and I loved it. I will definitely be reading more of her books. In fact, I've put at least one on my um, list of books I want to read in, in 2021. Um, so this is four short stories uh, that are great puzzles. Uh, you know, you can definitely see the influence of the Golden Age mystery writers on P.D. James. I loved every story. They were such good twists. Um, I often didn't see it coming. So I gave this one also five stars. Really loved it. So that's what I've finished. That one actually wasn't really for a prompt, but I guess it could probably fit in. It was just, uh, I thought, ah, this is a Christmassy mystery. Um, let, let's work it in there. So it didn't really work for one of the prompts. Well, it, it could, but I didn't necessarily attach it to any of the prompts. The next book is what I'm reading right now. I'm actually listening to an audiobook and then kind of every once in a while reading a chapter or two in the physical book that I have. That is Dissolution by C.J. Sansom. This is historical fiction mystery, so this is set in the Tudor period and follows Matthew Shardlake, the first in the Matthew Shardlake series. And Matthew Shardlake is a, an interesting detective. He is working for Cromwell and he is a hunchback. And so he, he's very religious, he's very devout uh, reformer, and he 
also feels vulnerable or, or somehow sometimes inferior to others because of his disability, uh, his disfigurement, I should say. So that plays a really interesting role in the story. I'm also really loving all of the characters that we meet. Um, in this story, there is a murder that takes place at a monastery. And so we're meeting all of the monks as we're trying to, you know, identify suspects. And I'm learning a lot about the time period for sure. So I'm loving this. I'm only about part of the way through. I would maybe say uh, two fifths, two fifths of the way through, not quite halfway. And I'm, I'm vastly enjoying it. Uh, this one fits the prompt for Hall, a book that enters you into a new to you author and or series. And it's doing both for me. Uh, all right. Picking up next, I have a couple of books, and I think I know the order that I would prefer to pick them up in, so that there's one that, like, if I, in case I don't get to it, oh well. Um, but the first one is 13 Guests by J. Jefferson Fargin. This is a lesser known golden age mystery. This fits the prompt of Dining Room, because there is a closed circle mystery. Lounge, because it's a book written in the golden age, uh, which is the 1920s, 1930s and Ballroom, which is a book featuring a party. There's a hunting party. And it looks like, they I believe they're in a hotel, so there probably is a literal ballroom in the book as well. Um, this just seems more interesting to me than the other book, and so I, I think I, I'd rather pick this one up next. The last book that I need to get to is The Tale of Hilltop Farm by Susan Wittig Albert. This is in the Cottage Tales of Beatrix Potter series. So it's kind of like a murder mystery series set in uh, the small town that Beatrix Potter lived in with her on her farm. Um, she is a character. There are also, so there's some real characters and then some um, made up characters to kind of flesh out this, this story. Uh, this fits the prompts of library, because it's a book that references books because of Beatrix Potter's books. Uh, conservatory, a book featuring nature. There's lots of uh, the countryside here. There's also lots of animals because of Beatrix Potter's love of animals. And then kitchen, because it is a small town mystery. So if I don't get to this one, that's fine. I will only make it to police detective in that case because I've only met six of the nine uh, prompts. So far, I have already met uh, uh, the amateur sleuth status, which is great. I'm aiming for Sherlock Holmes, even though I kind of combined some of the prompts into different books. Um, hopefully that's that's uh, kosher. Uh, that's okay. But uh, anyway, so this is the kind of the last book that would, would, would help me meet the Sherlock Holmes status. Uh, I have also yet to read The Birds by Daphne du Maurier. It's the short story group read. I've read it multiple times. Love it. It's so spooky. I definitely want to read it after it gets dark, which is so easy right now because here it gets dark at like 4.30 because I'm, I'm surrounded by mountains. Uh, and then I also did not get to the group watch Agatha and the Truth of Murder, so I might have to watch that on my own um, in the next few days. So that's, that's how I'm doing so far in Cloak and, Cloak and Dagger Christmas. I'm loving it. I enjoy mysteries. Um, I'm, I'm not prolific. Not prolific. That's not the right word. But I don't read a lot of murder mysteries. But I do enjoy them when I read them. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to get into some of these series or to pr pr progress with these series um, that I might not take in other times of the year. Tell me, are you participating in Cloak and Dagger Christmas? What are you reading? Um, have a wonderful day and remember that there is always another book.